very good afternoon to you from wherever you're watching us in East Africa and beyond. You are watching Weekend at One on the headlines. Kenya police says two terror suspects nabbed after arrival from Iran. Pope leads mass in Uganda's Namugongo Martyrs Shrine. And fighting in Yemen pushes refugees to Djibouti. Welcome to the program. My name is Michelle Ngele. At least 12 people have been killed in Kenya's Nanzo region in Migori and Homa Bay counties. In both instances, floodwaters swept away the vehicles in which the victims were traveling. Seven people have been confirmed dead after a minibus they were traveling in was washed away by floods at Agolo Muwak on Sori Magunda World in Homa Bay County. The vehicle was swept away by floods when its driver attempted to drive across a bridge on Agolo Muwak Stream. Rescuers saved 18 people, among them three children. In Migori County, five people were killed after a matatu they were traveling in was swept away by floods at Azriva Kuja in Migori County burst its banks following heavy rains. Deputy County Commissioner James Mabea said the PSV was overpowered by the floods that affected the Sori Kavungu area of Migori County. According to the Kenya Red Cross Society, 14 people were evacuated on Friday night. Heavy rains have been experienced in the Nyanza and Western region affecting livelihoods. Ten people were rescued following the Migori incident have been admitted at St. Camilla's Sori Hospital. Two Kenyans are in police custody for allegedly being members of an Iranian spy network linked to terror. The Inspector General of the National Police Service, Joseph Burnett, says the suspects, Abu Bakar, Sadiq Nuri, and Yasin Juna, traveled to Iran last month before returning to Kenya and planned to launch attacks on several undisclosed strategic installations and foreign missions. Burnett says the suspects have given police useful information about the intended terror mission and will be arraigned in court once investigations are completed. The police boss refused to disclose where the two suspects were arrested, but said the police are yet to confirm whether the Iranian spy agency is linked to Al Shabaab or the Islamic State group. We wish to announce this morning the arrest of two Kenyan individuals, or Kenyan citizens for that matter namely Abubakar Sadiq Long and Yasin Sambai Juma, whom we have irrefutable evidence that they have been recruited into a Iranian spying ring. The mission of that ring was to mount terror attacks in this city not only targeting Western interests, but targeting our people as well. You will no doubt recall that in the last uh, few weeks, we are, the world has witnessed horrific terror attacks. You will remember in France, in Lebanon, in Mali, and other parts of the world in which innocent civilians have lost their lives. And for us in the National Police Service, we will not tolerate subversive activity on our soil. And in that respect, therefore, we will work relentlessly uproot and foil the intentions of those kind of those kinds of networks mounted for by foreign powers. Unfortunately Mr. Lowe is an elder man, he's sixty nine years old. And we have information that he had been recruited 
Ak nebudú výjas a gol, and we are being instructed, instructed to recruit other Kenyans into the network, and we know he had managed to recruit a number of others, including Ms. Ayasin Zambai Juma. These two individuals have made a number of trips to Iran, in which they have made their handlers there. They have been given targets, they have been given money, and directed on the targets to case, obviously for future attacks. In this respect, you will recall that in 2012, and June 2012 to be exact, we arrested two other individuals and seized 12 kilo kilograms of my expressive in Mombasa called RDX. We are aware that Juma and Bain traveled to Iran last month. They met the handler there, his name is Parsa, and this new recruit, Juma, was tutored in operational threatcraft that include counter surveillance and counter interrogation te techniques. And he was instructed on how to operate in this country and how to arrange meetings with these handlers in certain capitals in this region. During the interviews, the two are given us very valuable information. They have, taught us, they have told us rather the areas they were targeting, the individuals whom they were planning to recruit, including targeting, unfortunately, school children for radicalization, obviously. I will wish also to thank other, secu other security agencies, both in this country, in the region, and beyond, for cooperating with us and enabling us to uproot this network. Still in Kenya, a police constable has shot dead his wife, who is also a police officer, and committed suicide at Itabua police station in Kenya's Embu County. The officer is said to have committed the act before his two children, aged six and three years. Lenny Mangi reports. After 10 p.m. Friday night, and police constable Paul Rotich excused himself from the sentry at Itabua police station in Embu West. He told his colleagues that he was walking home to take supper. <laughs> Minutes later, gunshots rang the air from his house. At the time his colleagues got here, Rotich and his wife, Agnes Wakaria, a police officer attached to the station's police dog unit, lay dead. Rotich is said to have shot his wife dead before turning the gun on himself in the presence of his two children aged three and six years. Since he was on guard, he was armed. Then when he went there, nobody uh, had even any, any quarrel within, uh, in, inside their house. They only heard the gunshots, and that's what the time they came out to know 
exactly what happened, and that's where, when the incident uh, occurred. The teach had only been transferred to this station, which also houses the Eastern Regional Police Headquarters. Only two months ago, Jamie and his wife, who has been working here for some time, his colleagues say they are still in shock as the teach appeared to be in his right state of mind throughout the day and had not had him quarrel with the wife. We are really shocked because uh, so far we could not imagine uh, him uh, doing whatever he did yesterday because he has been very big an officer. Uh, so we have started investigation to establish to know exactly what can really cause uh, this officer to, commit, uh, to murder the wife and also to commit suicide. But as his colleagues begin planning for the burial of the two, the dead have left millions of unanswered questions for the two now orphaned and traumatized children who so it all. News, Nairobi. Now to the people tour, Pope Francis is set to meet with Uganda youth this afternoon at the Kololo airstrip. The youth have been waiting patiently for hours at the venue as the Pope finished his morning engagements, which included the homily at Namu Gongo Catholic Shrine for Matters. This afternoon's meeting with the Uganda youth is the seventh major function, the plaintiff's packed Uganda itinerary. He is set to conclude his functions this evening with a meeting with the religious and seminarians before his departure from Uganda tomorrow morning.
footprints were stolen car to their doorsteps and allegedly found the car already slaughtered and stashed away in freezers. Karen Day has that report. It was the proverbial 40th day for twin brothers and of other countries in Gitero in Erie County. The three were accused of being cattle thieves. What sold them out after their seemingly successful venture was the footprints of one lone cow that had been stolen earlier in the day. Due to the rain, the footprints that remain etched on the muddy ground led residents to the suspect's three-bedroom bungalow. True to their suspicion, the residents found about 400 kilograms of meat stored in four huge refrigerators. The findings implicating the three in a possible intricate cycle of selling stolen meat to different outlets in Mary. There was a section in the compound believed to have been the hiding place for the heads of the stolen animal. <laughs> Perhaps a bid to wipe out all evidence from prying eyes. The agitated crowd, having found the proof they were looking for, went ahead to set the permanent house ablaze. Not only did they burn the house, but they also went for the car and that too went up in flames. <laughs> Some residents took advantage of the rising confusion and made away with anything and everything they could lay their hands on. Doors, pipes, furniture, even the main gate. Nothing was salvaged. The suspect's German shepherd dog too found a new owner. <laughs> It took the intervention of police officers to save the three suspects from possible lynching as they were whisked into a waiting police car. The residents claimed that that village alone had lost more than 40 cars. We shall take them to court. They will be charged. We will be doing the possession of cannabis sativa, six kilos and selling or being in the possession of unexpected meat uh, which was actually found in the in the in that house half a game bag of marijuana was also found in the suspect's house carrying the recruiting news a Muslim outfit in Garissa town has announced that it will undertake a massive cleansing of the town in commemoration of the many lives lost in various terror attacks in the region. The cleansing exercise to be conducted by the al Sufiwal Jama Islamic outfit will involve the slaughter of camels, cows and goats which will be roasted and feasted on by the residents. The event organizers, however, lamented about the declining levels of responsible parenthood which they blamed for the increasing cases of radicalization of young people. They, however, asked their fellow Muslim clerics to preach the message of religious unity in order to foster national unity. Ujirani mwema sisi Kenya tumekuwa nao kwa muda mrefu. Uislamu hakuanza jana na juzi, wala kuanza miaka kumi iliyopita, wala haukuanza miaka hamsini iliyopita. Uislamu uko kitambo na hatukuona matatizo kama hayo. Nafikiri kabla ya kuja fikra ya jihad, Christians walikuwa wako katika mkoa huu. Na walikuwa kifanya kazi zao na walikuwa wakiishi kulikuwa hakuna tatizo kama hilo wala halikupatikana cos sisi tuko na miaka mingi tumeishi nao Nairobi kumeishi waislamu na wasiokuwa waislamu kuenea waislamu katika Kenya wameenea kwa kuwa wanaweza kuishi 
na zao kumekuja mpaka wageni waislamu wamekaa wameoana na jamii za huku wengine utakuta mtu wewe ni muislamu ndio baki si muislamu Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta arrived in Malta this morning to attend the 24th Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. The meeting brings together delegates from 53 countries to reflect on the Commonwealth's strengths that can influence positive change on global social economic development with special focus on matters affecting member nations. The summit whose theme is added global value is being hosted by the Prime Minister of Malta, Joseph Muscat, at the Mediterranean Conference Center in Valletta, the capital city. The meeting officially opened by the head of Commonwealth, Queen Elizabeth II, yesterday comes days ahead of the Paris Climate Conference and has dedicated a special session to climate change.